evening. So let me uh, stand out of the way and let them up again as soon as they're ready to do it. Good morning. I want to thank y'all for coming out today. I want to introduce a few people that are with me. Again, I've got Captain Mark Vaughn from the U.S. Coast Guard with us. I have Chief Butler. This is the chief of uh, Fairfax County. I have his deputy chief, Rick Roach, who y'all have already met. I've got the union president, uh, Rick Cooley, from uh, Fairfax County, and I have our union president, Local 122 President, Randy Wise. Um, I'm going to bring up Captain Vaughn and let him start the press conference today. Good afternoon. Um, we, uh, we continue to search this morning. We've got a number of aircraft and a number of cutters out this morning, and we'll uh, continue to have aircraft and cutters out this afternoon in a search that presently exceeds 105,000 square miles. As I've been uh, mentioning over the last couple days, um, as we've continued in this race against time, um, going into the evening and into tomorrow, our search area will extend from, uh, the nearly off the, from several hundred miles off the coast of New England uh, down to the central part of Florida. And at this point, without additional information, we have simply reached a point where our computer modeling and our ability to search in a given location are no longer allowing us to uh, search with any reasonable degree or probability of success. And with that information, um, in meeting with our partners, in meeting with the families and the other search assets, I've made the extremely difficult decision today that uh, we will suspend the active search uh, tonight at sundown. I'd like to thank, um, as we go forward, um, we've had some incredible outpouring of support from the public, from the fire, Fairfax County Fire Department, from the Jacksonville Fire Department, uh, the United States Navy, the Air Force, uh, F Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Marshal Service, the Customs and Border Protection, off the field operations, and some incredible, absolutely persistent aviation um, coverage from our Customs and Border Protection partners with the Office of Air and Marine who have allowed us to uh, extend the search um, to far, farther and broader than we otherwise could have without them. Um, we, the Coast Guard, when we suspend a search, we never stop operating. The Coast Guard remains, and we will remain, ready, relevant, and responsive, and we will have cutters underway tomorrow. We'll have aircraft underway as we operate globally 24-7, 365 around the world. Everyone will know that we still have Brian and Justin somewhere out there, and we remain with them. Our thoughts and prayers remain with them, and we stand here with our brothers from the F Fairfax County Fire Department, our brothers and sisters, as well as those in Jacksonville, and our thoughts and prayers, of course, remain with Rustin, Br Justin, Brian, and their families. Thank you. Real quick, I'm going to update what we've done today, where we're at. Um, we put. 15 boats out of Savannah today. We've got boats that are out of Charleston today. Those boats are covering about 4,000 square miles, and we have three aircraft that are covering actually north of Charleston some and south of Charleston, uh, making sure that we're saturating that area good today. As the captain said, we kind of follow the lead of the Coast Guard in this. They are the experts. Um, we, uh, we are suspending our active search as well at sundown today. That is an extremely tough decision because we've got a brother out there that we just haven't been able to find. Um, I want to thank the community. Without without the community, this none of this would have been possible. Um, we had a, a, a guy named Chad Walton out of Charleston that is heading that search effort up for us, and he has poured his heart and his soul into this, making sure that we're covered in that area. Um, the Savannah Fire Department has, has had their boat on the water every day helping us. Bill Hay, he's a pilot that flies out of Craig Airport. He has coordinated all of our all of our flight ops for us. And specifically, I want to speak to the JFRD personnel that have volunteered their time and money into this. Um, just know I'm extremely proud of you, and this is what this is what brothers do for each other. Um, at this point, I'd like to bring up Chief Butler from Fairfax County. Let him say a few words. Good uh, good morning. Um, on behalf of all the residents and uh, citizens of, of Fairfax County, Virginia, and especially uh, Station 5B in Franconia, um, I, I bring you greetings and I speak on behalf of all those uh, members, uh, uh, Justin and Brian, uh, who are thinking of, of them and continuing to, uh, 
to, to valiantly um, assist in any way possible. Um, from our board of supervisors to our fire department in Fairfax County, Virginia, I, I bring uh, greetings and appreciation to our partners uh, in the U.S. Coast Guard and uh, federal, regional, and local assets. And most importantly, uh, those volunteers, those volunteers that didn't, that don't wear a uniform, who uh, dove in and, and, and assisted in the search. Um, my my brother, who I've now gotten to know, uh, Chief uh, Keith Powers, has been a, a professional and a a, a, a fellow uh, to share ideas with. I'm really proud and uh, of your organization. You have done a great job in uh, uh, hosting us. Thank you. Chief Powers. Uh, I have one more thing to say, then we'll take some questions. Um, the last, the last group I want to thank is our federal partners. They have, especially the, the Coast Guard, and under the leadership of Captain Blonde, they have, they have poured every reasonable asset into this area. And in this search area is, is big, very big. I think I heard this morning you say the size of Colorado. To, to do everything possible to find these two firefighters. And Captain, I want to just give you a heartfelt thanks again for all that you've done and all the federal partners that have come in and helped us with this. Thank you. Chief Powers, everybody's fire from the Coast goes out to the, the family. I assume you've been in touch with them. What are they doing today? I just left the families right before we came out here and uh, they're heartbroken. And I can't say that I feel any different right now. Is there is it is it hard with morale when every single fire department employee seems to be invested in this personally? They still have jobs to do, but, but they know for a lot of them this was their friend, this was their colleague. What are you telling them? What are the chaplains telling them to get through this difficult time, losing or potentially losing one of their own? So we uh, actually at 11:30 this morning I sent an email out to the field while we were in here meeting with the families. Um, and we have been working, partnering with the International Association of Firefighters. We have our own peer, internal peer support group, but the International Association of Firefighters has been gracious enough to bring in their group as well. And we are offering those services to uh, not only Station 31, which is, which is, you know, the station is uh, where where our uh, McClooney worked at, but also to the rest of the department uh, to make sure that we're taking care of all of their needs and. Uh, they're, they're going to be here for the, the foreseeable future, however long that takes to make sure that our people are in a good place. Do you know how many donations were given through jfod.com and are you still asking for them? I do not.